Hey, welcome to this week's video. My name is Chad and we're going to do a little more ammo testing and I have got some questions that I want to get answers from. So, um, first things first, let me know how this looks, sounds, everything. Um, what happened was uh, a couple weeks ago my Osmo Pocket 3, the screen that is uh, displaying all my information and what I'm seeing, like got wonky and stayed stuck. So something that I couldn't fix or repair, sent it in and I just got it back this week and I guess they just decided to replace the whole unit. So I had to go in and try to remember what all my settings were. So hopefully this is close to uh, at least being good enough for you know what we're doing here. So please let me know how it looks, how it sounds. If there's anything wonky that you noticed on the audio visual side of things, please drop that in the comments. I want to use this as my get this back up and going uh, video and have everything set and locked in, be good to go for the future. So like I showed last week, this was my uh, results. And, you know, I'm pretty happy with this last group up here. What I did kind of think some of the problem was is I was shooting like after dark and my, uh, my trigger cam it will cast a pretty decent shadow. So as I'm looking through the scope, it is darker than if you don't have it on there. So what I decided to do uh, yesterday was load up two more charges. Like I said, I'm trying to find that one special uh, speed and see how it looks there. Um, obviously this one's pretty good, but I think some of this side to side was me just uh, both losing my aiming point and, and uh, you know not being able to see the target super well. So I took the cam off and went out with some different stuff yesterday and got really close to the speeds that I was wanting. But ideally, um, today's results should hopefully be better. Um, I adjusted my scope like a whole mil up. So I'm aiming here and I'm hitting like up here above the target. So I'll probably adjust that down. I went a little too far with it, but... I think that's helping me like I can keep a line on this line here with the center of my reticle but I lost my side to side good aiming point when I did this so that's one idea that I think will help me determine what my best uh, loading is going to be for this particular brass okay so I want to go over the two groups that I shot yesterday the first one I had a, a ES of 15 and a standard deviation of 4.7 and on the shot list, like I had one, they were averaging around five uh, deviation from the average, except I had one that was 10.5 out of that norm. So I don't know, I think I'm going to just leave that one in here for now. That was the first group. Um, what I am thinking I'm going to do a removal on is the second group had a extreme spread of 20.9, but a standard deviation of 5.5. I had most of them in like the mid 2980s and what i noticed was i believe the very first shot in that group so the first shot in that group was 29.99 so considerably outside the the range of that so i think what i'm going to do is delete that one and see what my averages are from there looks like i'm kind of within six feet per second without that oh yeah so taking out that one odd one it dropped my extreme spread to 9.8 and my standard deviation to 3.3 and that got me a 29.84 on the speed so quite a bit right there in that range where my lapua brass was uh running good and, and grouping well the group was as about a half inch and um i think that i want to try uh probably another two tenths up that was a 39.9 so i'll probably try like a 40.1 actually you know what i think i'll just try a 40.0 and a 40.1 that should get me 10 uh shots in fairly close uh succession so we're gonna get these loaded up and then go out and test I've been kind of trying to slack off for most of today because it's like 110 outside and maybe a two to five mile an hour wind ever so occasionally. 
Like every time I've gone outside, it's just been, feels like dead calm and just brutal sun rays shining on my arm and my head. It's very unpleasant this week in Oklahoma. Okay, so I'm not sure how good this is actually going to come through, but what I've noticed is my first couple loads, I've got some soot built up on the neck there. And I'm not sure how important that actually is, but these were some of my initial um, loading cases. And then as I've noticed, as I've been getting uh, a little bit more and more powder, I'm getting less and less of that. So I don't know, is that something to be concerned about? Or, you know, nothing is blowing by. So everything's obviously stopping in the chamber, but I'm not too sure. So these were some of my last ones with this bigger charge and they're still a little bit, but not very much compared to those initial ones. So I don't know if that's something I'm just noticing and worrying about for no reason, but if anybody could let me know, that would be very much appreciated here. You see some of these got like they were really bad and it's been cleaning up the more powder I've been getting into it. So I'm assuming it's sealing a little bit tighter. But I never stopped to notice on uh, anything else to see if it was something that has always happened or if this is kind of a new development that I'm just now noticing with this brass. I've also noticed that this brass does not really like expand. So when I'm using this to measure new and then after firing, Okay, so here's a new case, and it's coming down to right there at uh, 0.1. So this is just like a comparator, good for setting like headspace, or, or not headspace, but your shoulder bump on your die. See, and that one's coming to zero. So this is new, unfired, and I'll just pull one out randomly out of my stack that I fired yesterday and come down in zero again. So I'm getting like no neck stretch at all, it seems. So I don't know, is that weird or does that just mean, you know, my chamber is really good with this particular brass? Another thing I would like to know. Now here's the other thing that I noticed. So I marked a couple of these cases with just a little miniature star kind of thing. I don't know if this is going to show up, but can you see how some of these have not a perfectly round neck? So this one here on this side's got a little dent pushing in right there. So I'm going to have to finish this up inside the house. It was uh, quite ridiculously hot out there. And uh, by the time I got all my shots in, it was well past dark. So... Um, Here's what I'm going to need some more opinion on than uh, just from myself. So this right here was the 39.7. All right, and that did well. And then this was my 39.9. So just a hair, right about a half MOA. All right, my speeds were pretty close to what I want there. And then with the 40.0 that I tried this evening, that was the group. So I'm trying to aim here and I just adjust the elevation on my scope some. And that lets me keep aiming at this same point. I don't know why I didn't try that earlier, but there we go. I finally added that. So and that got a little bit stringy left to right, but I didn't have a light shining down here when I did this and I really should have. So that was on me, but numbers were starting to get more spread out. And then this, this one, I don't know what's going on here. So this was at 40.1. I had a light down there, so I was able to aim well. Like my left and right is just, it stayed really good, but I've got three quarters of an inch up and down. So I don't know if that is just me, you know, being twitchy, or is that what is happening as I'm getting uh, more powder in here? Uh, let me show you. So the numbers, that had a, a 38 and a half extreme spread. And the standard deviation was 11.6. So that had the worst numbers. 
And like I said, left and right's good, but my up and down's all over the place. I had a couple shots that were like one 3012 and a 2981 and a 2979. So those are the most extremes in a 3018. I should say that's the most extreme. So for the most part, it was around 2980s and 90s, but that one started jumping all over the place. Now, this one here, the 39.9 that I shot last night, um, when I take out the one odd one, that gives me a 3.3 .3 and 9.8 on my ES. So, for the most part, the speed's about what I want it to be. I'll tell you what I am currently thinking. As you can see, I'm off to, I think, a good start. I mean, really, what I'm seeing from all of these tests is that I've got to range pretty much the whole 39 to 40. Any charge weight in that, I'm able to get half-inch groups pretty much. Um, what I need to figure out now, and I think the only way to do that is going to be go ahead and go through the next steps. So uh, this week I'm going to go start depriming all of these and run them through the annealer. Go ahead and get them ready. And I've got two other questions that I'd like some. This is kind of my, these are my results so far. Let me ask all of you guys because I really do need a couple pointers. Like from what I'm seeing, I'm thinking any of these charges are good, at least good for what I need it for. And I should just pick one and, and go with it. What my concern is that I noticed, like I said, after the Lapua's, I had slightly different numbers with the same powder charge from the new unfired brass to the resized and reloaded brass. So kind of my plan right now is to go ahead and process all of these. And then I'll probably start with like this 39.9, maybe load up 10 to 15 or 20 of those and take them out, see what it does. If numbers are, you know, similar or hopefully a little more consistent, then I know I'm off to the right, you know, going in the right direction. And maybe I should stop tinkering with powder and maybe just start messing with the tuner a little bit. So my other question is going to be about the sizing die. Now, when I set this, is it set for resizing brass to be, you know, 2000 shoulder bump from my chamber? Or is this going to be only set for the Lapua brass? So I don't know if I'm going to need to adjust the, uh, the up and down here to push the shoulder back differently. Like I said, the number uh, from the measurements I've taken, uh, these shoulders have not grown at all. So all, all these first firings have given me no change in the shoulder measurement. And that's kind of weird, but I'm sure I still need to resize it. Um, obviously, I've got to put in a different bushing. And what I'll give you my plan right now is I'm going to try and just leave the die as it is in my head. It's size or it's set to, you know, resize to two thousandths under my chamber. So I should be able to set, keep it set for it's threaded in now, change the bushing for this neck, go ahead, size it, compress that neck back down, then run the mandrel through. And what I found out that mandrel die from Cortino is actually going to size this base a little bit as well. I think I'm going to run with that, but I'd really like uh, more opinion on this. Uh, I did see that Area 419 is about to come out with a 7.8 sizing die. So I put myself on the waiting list for that. I do want to check that out. And of course, their decapping pin is like a regular mandrel. So now that I bought a mandrel die, uh, Area 419 is going to release theirs. And next thing I know, I'll have two sizing dies and two mandrel dies. <laughs> But that's fine. We'll make it work. I'm sorry about my voice. I have been losing it for the last couple of weeks, it seems, in the evenings. I do too much talking during the day, apparently. And by the time the night comes around, I am just losing it completely. So apologies for that. I hope you stick around. So anyways, please, if you could, get subscribed down below. That really helps me get my videos out a little bit more. 
I'm really trying to reach more people so I can get some more input coming in. I hope I'm doing this stuff right. I, if you've watched any of my videos, you can probably tell that I'm a little bit OCD. So when I can change little variables and get slightly different results, I want to tinker around with those as much as possible and see if I can find what is the maximum best thing that I can produce. So right now, I'm pretty well convinced that I've done all I can. I still have 10 unfired rounds. I may just sit on those for a little while because um, I think I've really got to shift gears now and get these sized and you know run the mandrel that should really clean up the consistency of my neck so they release better. So that'll hopefully shrink my ESs and SDs. At least that's what it's supposed to do. I'm thinking I'm going to go with this 39.9. Overall, it's got the best ES and SD numbers still with a good small group. I think really from, like I said, what I've seen on all these tests that I've done, it's holding a pretty good size group, no matter what charge weight I do in like a whole grain range. So in theory, I should be able to resize these, see what the 39.9 looks like on target. If that looks good, then I'll load up some more and just start tinkering with the tuner and see if I can you know, shrink them down from a 0.5 MOA. I like to see 0.3 to 0.2. That's my goal. We'll see what happens. I'm halfway through my barrel at least, so that might not be possible, but a few more weeks to go before the PRS season here starts up again, and I really want to get this dialed in and then able to get over that mental hump and I can start working on all the, uh, the movements and bags and all that stuff. I need to get some more practice in with that, make sure that I'm going to be ready to go for the first match. And I really want to shoot for a top five for the first match. I'd really, really want to push myself and see if I can get top three or four, but I figure everybody's going to be there. So I'll definitely have my work cut out to me for me to get in the top three. So we'll see. Hey, please do leave your comments down below and let me know what do you suggest I do? Is my thinking on the right track? Do I need to just resize these, get into it, and see what it looks like after all of that processing is done. Do I need to do more powder tests or have I kind of exhausted the possibilities there? Please help me. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this all out. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I really, really do appreciate everybody that watches my videos and leaves me some suggestions and comments. So thank you so very much for hanging out with me for a few minutes. I really do hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.